everyone. I'm Alina. I'm your host. I have a co-host today, Agnesa. You will see her dropping some things. There she is. You'll Hi. see her dropping some things in the comments. You'll have her kind of give you a rundown of which guests we're having today. First of all, I wanted to tell you this the third virtual creative workshop and variety, sh and ver and variety show. I can't even say it. It's a little, it's kind of a mouthful. And there are still going to be a couple of little things that we're figuring out and these shows are only going to get better and better. But I know I say this every time, but I really mean it each time. I managed to find some really, really amazing people who are going to be sharing such amazing creative skills today. And I'm really excited about introducing them to you and having them be a part of this show. I, again, was a little bit last minute with planning it, but I managed to find some beautiful, wonderful, kind souls who last minute agreed to come here. We'll have a rundown of a little bit of who's going to come up here just a little bit, but I wanted to explain ahead of time that some people will go on for a longer or a shorter period of time. Some people will have a little bit of a of, you know, question and answer, and um, it'll be a little different for the different artists we have because it depends on personality, depends on the content. So you'll see that with each person who goes on, uh, the show will be a little bit different. For the audience, lovely to have you all here again. Thank you for coming. Uh, at any point, use the chat room. Write your questions in the chat room if you want for any of our artists who are going on. And I'll usually read them out loud when I get to them and have, you know, ask if the artist has a chance to answer those. You'll also be welcome to participate in the writing prompt that will happen later on here. And that's mostly it for you. And oh, and by the way, you will be muted occasionally if you have background sound. And if that happens, you feel free to unmute yourself if you ever want to speak. But if there is background sound and you're wondering why you're muted, that's why. All right, well, the show is about to begin. I'm going to have my lovely co-host who's helping me be a little bit more organized and a little bit less frazzled. Um, Agnesa will give you a little bit of a rundown of what's happening today and who's going on the show, who's going to be our featured guests. Hi everyone, I'm Agnesa and my screen name is Angel Schick. That is my, um, my tag name across social media. I'm not sure why it's like that on here. I have no idea why, so I apologize for any confusion. Um, so I'm going to give you a rundown of who will be going today. And um, I have it a little bit disorganized. I do apologize, so bear with me. Um, so first we'll be starting with Natalie, and she'll be doing home decor. She'll be sharing a few different projects and also showing progress photos. And these are actually things that she has around the house, so that's pretty cool. Um, next, we will have Darji, and Darji will be sharing. <laughs> no worries. I, it's completely my fault. I sent her this information very last minute because I have actually a guest visiting a little. I kind of have a new quarantine partner here, and she will actually be on the show. You'll see in a second. But because I have an awesome friend here to have fun with, uh, we were kind of a little distracted. So Darji actually is a digital and watercolor artist with the focus on human characters and portraits. And that's the information that I kind of sent last minute to Agnesa, so don't blame her for my disorganization. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then after Darji, we'll have Vanessa, and Vanessa will be sharing Ricky Infused Knitting. So there's secondhand materials that are then infused with Ricky to support a greener, cleaner, and more magical world. I love that. Um, and then we will have Elina going up to share a spoken word poem. That will be followed by a writing prompt. And we'll have a couple of guests sharing their impromptu poems. And that will be followed by Stephen playing a guitar song for us. He's already shared for us before, correct? Yes, Stephen yeah. was on the last show. It was his first time playing a song. He's back today with another song. Okay. Well, thank you, Agnesa. That was our list of guests for today. And we're going to start with Natalie first. I'm going to pull up uh, a few files that I will share with you. We'll start with, and Natalie, by the way, is right over there in orange. She is my lovely guest. She's from Chile. And I met her in Bend, Oregon and she is very creative in ways that I 
really didn't know people could be. So when I visited her house for the first time in Bend, I saw these cool things in her living room and I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And every single time, pretty much I said that she was like, I made that. I made that too. I made that too. Um, so that was really cool finding out that people can actually basically make all the decor in their house and not have to buy it. And how is it that you phrased it? Um, Natalie, you said something about how it's instead of spending a lot of money on it when you're broke, you'd rather make the things yourself. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I'm going to share some images with you here. I'm going to share this one first. And does everybody hear Natalie okay if she's in the same room? If we don't have any interference, let's have her say something. Hi, sorry. Thumbs up if you hear her okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, because she's in the room, but she's over there. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> sharing a picture here of something that Natalie made. And I guess what you'd call it is a mobile, a hanging mobile. I'll show another picture of it from a different angle in just a second. Natalie, do you want to say anything about how you made this and what inspired it? Sorry, do you mind if I interrupt real quick? Natalie, could you unmute yourself? I think it, it might, your voice will come up a little bit louder for everyone. Yeah. Can you just come here and share the, uh, she can't unmute herself because our laptops are having interference issues because we're oh, And it sounds crazy, your ears will bleed. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, never We've mind. learned that the hard way, but we can share the same computer. Um, and then you'll just, we'll, I'll just scoot here into the corner. And so you can see both of us at once. I'm going to share another picture really quick here of a different angle of that same image. Okay, right over here is an image of that same mobile, but from a different angle. And you can see it instead of from below, you can see it from the side. And now I'm going to have Natalie tell us a little bit about what inspired it. Uh, so I, I love origami. I, I always wanted to do a piece of art with, with origami, but I never really knew like how to put it together. So um, uh, we move out with my husband to this new place and I hate the stairs. So as a rental, I just wanted to put a little bit of life on it. So I just made something to make it less creepy <laughs> brighten it up a little bit right mm -hmm. yeah so um i use a piece of copper to hang it and um yeah i, I made some some origami um stars yeah and then the next picture here these oh let me show you the other way around when natalie moved in this is what her stairs looked like in her house. And again, she said creepy. She wanted her house to be a little less creepy. She didn't want these like really super steep stairs going up to a dark, you know, dark and creepy room up there. So what she did is you could see the work in progress here. You could see the wooden back there that were just the wooden plain ones. And then this is her work. Here is the finished version when it's all completed. And I'm going to have Natalie tell you a little bit about how she did that because you would never hear. How about this? If I had somebody guess and feel free to unmute yourself for this, how do you think she did this? How, what do you think she did to the stairs to make them look like this? Let's see if somebody guesses it. Anybody? Someone in the chat, uh, Vanessa is asking whether it was fabric and hot glue. John, <laughs> she's asking perhaps painted wood. So as a rental, I didn't really want to be invasive with it. So I used paper, uh, like a, for a scrap, it was a scrapbook. So I just cut paper and I just glued it to it. So I know that I'm not really damaging or being too invasive with the rental. And I'm not a scared afternoon, every afternoon of going upstairs. So <laughs> it's a little bit of brightness to the yeah. place. And I only visited when it already looked like this, I think. I've never seen it with a creepy version. But when I came, I think, well, actually, maybe I did. I just remember one day I was actually, I stayed in the room on the top of these stairs. And I was just like, this is really cool. How would you do it? But yeah, who would have thought that you could use scrapbooking paper to decorate your stairs, right? <laughs> so another picture I have here to share with you is, if you look at this, Natalie told me these are slides, projector slides, and there are several of them here. I was going to have you guys guess what you think she's going to do with this, but I don't think anybody's going to get, be able to figure it out. This is how creative she is. She took a look at these and she turned them into 
this. And you still can't really tell what this is going to be, right? Does anybody have a guess? Let's see. I'm gonna check. Let's see if anybody gets it. Okay, yeah, we got lamp. <laughs> right, three people guessed lamp. So here is the image of it as an actual lamp in her house. I visited her house, saw it, and was like, that's really cool. Where'd you get that? And she's like, I made it. <laughs> So I was looking at this, trying to figure out how she could have possibly made that. Um, and so now it's really cool with her showing these images of the actual slides, what, how tiny they are, what it look, they looked like before she turned them into a piece of art. And you That's know, so they're, yeah, and they're cool pieces of furniture, but you don't typically think of furniture as a form of art, right? And a creative art that somebody usually creates in their own house. But this yeah. girl, that's what she does. And a then a question from yeah. Maria. She said, very cool. Where did she get the slides? So uh, my father-in-law was cleaning his office, going through his items, saying those are actually pictures of my in-laws. That's Chile. My father-in-law is from Chile too, as well. So actually they're part of uh, my, my husband's history. So there is a couple of pictures of like uh, my in-laws when they were super young. And then there is a couple of trips. So when you look very close to the lamp, you actually see them like uh, being in different, visiting different places. So it has some story as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's so cool. It's so personal. I love that. I actually did not know that. I meant to ask you that question and somebody beat me to it, which is really cool. But I didn't know that it was personal to you. I thought you found them like in some thrift store somewhere in a box. No, he was throwing them and I was like, no, don't do that. Give me that. He was going to throw them away. Your trash is my treasure. So oh that's my God. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, I was also going to ask you, Natalie, how did you just look at a bunch of slides and come up with this idea? So I... I grew up in a family that I wasn't really able to have everything that, you know, it will be trendy. When you don't have something, you have to force yourself creatively. I cannot really explain. I just, I storage things that they look cool. And if it doesn't come on the moment, it will come later. But when I saved them, I knew that I can do something. But right on the moment, I didn't know what to do with them. It just came later that I needed a lamp. So I was like, there you go. That's awesome. Maria actually added, she said, that's so great. I love it. You could sell those to people. They send in their slides and you could make them a custom lamp. That's a good I idea. There would be more slides around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Mace said, I love the story behind the lamp piece. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We had this conversation earlier today. Where I asked her, why, why doesn't she basically start just making these things for people as a job? And we had the conversation of where, but will I lose my love for the mm -hmm. art if I'm doing it as a job? So that's kind of the concern here. Do we want to add anything to that? Uh, not to this piece. Okay. okay. We're also going to show you a couple of things that she actually has here in person um, that she brought with her to my house to show you. But really quick before we do that, I'm just going to scroll through these one last time for anybody who missed anything. Um, Vanessa also added, I would buy one. I have lots of slides with no and nothing to do with them. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> definitely a good idea. If you feel up to taking on any projects, feel free to share your info in the chat at some point. Again, this is completely her choice because we just had this conversation about should an artist go that route or will they lose the passion? So we'll see. It's completely up to Natalie. But of course, we've had we've featured artists who've turned their art into careers. And, you know, for some people, it's exactly what they've always wanted. For other people, they want to keep it as a fun hobby. Because what other hobby are you going to have if you turn your hobby into a job? Yeah, and Maria says, yep, I totally understand that. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's it for these images. And I'm going to have Natalie show me a couple things we have in person. Can we start with the stools? Oh, the pillows? Yeah. That's great. Well, I like to sew as well. So I made pillows. Oh. So this is a month on pillow. And I said, can see it yeah. well. And I made actually a stand. So she was working on these pillows here in my house. She bought her whole uh, sewing machine there and everything. <laughs> ah. Really cute. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Everybody see them okay? What they look like, they're mountains. And they're actually kind of like fuzzy and velvety up here at the top. It's really cool. Just not with them. 
Did you want to show the other ones you were working on, the patterns? Just the... Uh, well... She was, she was working on a few more that aren't done yet, but we could just show you the fabrics. She wanted to do some kind of like funky different mm -hmm. colors for the mountains. Look at the orange tops right there. Yeah. Maria's saying, I love it. So creative and so cute. Maze is saying, wow. <laughs> yeah, I would call their mountains. That's so awesome. If I, thank you. <laughs> if I didn't live in a studio without a couch, I'd probably need one of these, but at this point, <laughs> there's nowhere to use them. And I'm like, I'll put them on the floor. All right, so next we have something else Natalie brought with her. She actually drove with these in the car so she can show them to you. So I bought these in a garage sale. They were in a really bad shape, but I felt so bad and I love this style. So I just uh, removed everything and scrapped them over and restored them. And then I wanted to give it some colors. So I paint them by hand, uh, the fabric. And I just wanted to make them now more like a vintage. I love colors, so I just I just restored the whole thing. So Natalie explained to me, and I asked her about this earlier. So this stool, you said it was like a really plain, ugly wooden color. Mm -hmm. And then she sanded it and um, she painted these. And then this up here, she said they were really dirty too. She cleaned the whole fabric and she said it still looks disgusting. So she decided to paint the whole top here. To make it look really fun. That's so awesome. I know. Uh, one. Yeah, and she has two of them. So if you if you see there's two, oh, two wow. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think somebody kept us or I think somebody kept them outside, right? And they were like in really bad shape from like weather damage and sun damage, right? Wow, yeah. I would have never known. They look amazing. You did such a great job. Thank you. They look brand new. Oh, you're, you're using one now to sit on. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's why she's a little lower. <laughs> yeah. May said, I want like one of everything you've made so far. <laughs> Maria <laughs> mentioned, so great. Thank you. I'm really shy about sharing my art. I always feel like uh, I'm very critic of my art. So I always like to do things like for my house, but always trying to keep my mind open and not close to just one style. I don't know if I feel like painting, I like to paint or sew or, you know, like restore things or make origami, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, I was just fascinated by, by her type of creativity. That is not a skill that I have. I can't really make functional things. I, <laughs> I write things and I put paint on canvases sometimes or pencil and that's it. So for me to see somebody get furniture and decide I'm gonna paint the furniture, that to me was, oh, I see, I never would have thought of that. Paint the canvas on a stool. So this is my wonderful creative friend, Natalie. And I'm so happy, I'm so honored that you were a part of this. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. Okay, well up next we have Vanessa Marie. And actually I'm gonna show you one of her creations. I'm wearing it, it's a shirt. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually wanted to support an art, an artist. I actually, okay, Vanessa, I don't know her in person. I discovered her because of these. I saw these and I thought, what an awesome person. And somehow we became Facebook friends. And at some point recently, I only got this like four or five days ago, I decided to order one for myself. And I think it's a really cool, fun uh, shirt, crochet, halter. That's what it is, right? Yes, crochet. Awesome. So I'm gonna have um, Vanessa share a little bit about some pictures I'm going to show you all of the different types of things she makes. She doesn't make just clothes. That's really what attracted me the most because I'm a person who likes wearing fun, colorful things. But we have lots of other things here to show you. Let me just pull that up. And a few of them will be very obvious what they are from the really beginning. A few of them I'll have you guess what they are. And I'll have Vanessa talk about any any of them that she wants to say something about. I was gonna say, sometimes you can turn your art into your profession and still love it because it's been about a year business for me and it's really just now starting to be a full business that is slowly supporting me. So I'm all in favor of artists making their art and selling it because if you can still maintain the love and passion for it. But um, yeah, I took all of my passions and turned them into one. Um, I was diagnosed with Addison's disease a couple years ago, 
which is a chronic condition, basically meaning that my adrenal glands no longer function. And um, I was a yoga preschool teacher, which is a very active job. And I was no longer able to do that physically. I had to spend a lot of time in bed and recovering. And it was really um, obviously drastic and traumatic. So I took a lot of things that I love and turned it into something really pleasurable and something that I was able to share with other people. So I only work in secondhand materials because I'm a really um, strong believer in a zero waste or less waste lifestyle. That's how I like to live. I want to leave the planet a better place before I leave it, a cleaner place. So I only work in secondhand materials. And then I became a Reiki practitioner to um, do energy healing work on my own chronic conditions and then started infusing it into my work as well as just um, knitting and crocheting is a really passive thing I can do while stuck in bed if I'm in the middle of a flare. So I took all these things that I love and I kind of just threw them all together to create this um, business stitch and spoonie. Um, yeah, that's what I, a spoonie is a term that uh, chronic illness people use to, um, it's based on the spoon theory, which I won't go all into that, but uh, People with chronic illnesses call themselves Spoonies. So I created my business, Stitch and Spoonie. And I started out mostly really self-taught. My brain doesn't work in the way of understanding patterns. So I can't watch YouTube videos or read patterns. Um, it's trial and error and just playing. So I slowly, like if I look at my stuff from a year ago, it's kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe I made those terrible things. And then I look at what I've made now and I'm like, okay, cool, like look at the progress. I feel really proud of that. So now I've, I'm making a lot of toys, a lot of secondhand toys, which is a way for me to still make magic for the kids that I used to teach without um, being physically presently there. Mm -hmm. That wasn't too long of a story. That's mm -hmm. where it all, that's where it all came from. <laughs> not at all. We're not in a rush here. We have a, an hour and a half long of all kinds of creativity and art and music and poetry and all kinds of things. So if anybody's getting impatient at this point, they're in for quite the street. <laughs> so one thing I did want to add, uh, maybe clarify a little bit is when I mentioned earlier about Natalie saying that she's not in a place where she wants to sell her art. She, I want to, so I'm all for artists turning, turning their passions into <laughs> their career. Just to clarify, I mean, I honestly, I, that's sort of what I did. I'm a book editor. I've always been a huge reader. I'm also a part-time writer and that's my second favorite passion in the world. So I found a way to turn it into a career and I'm all for people who want to do that. I feel like Natalie in her situation, she has this other professional career that she's chosen to pursue. And for her, art is something that she does to de-stress when she comes home from work and she loves having this this thing that she comes home to and she's like, oh, now I get to do this. And she gets to appreciate it every time. And I feel like for some people, if instead she comes home and she's like, I have 30 orders and I got to pump them out by the end of this week, then she won't have that, ah, oh, now I get to do this. And for now, it's like a thing she gets to relax and do. But for some people, especially like, let's say Vanessa, you probably have had a lot of orders and you've taken a look at them and thought, I have to handle all the accounting of this now. Well, I really like, I feel really grateful that the clients or the customers that I have are really understanding and supportive of the fact that I only work in secondhand material. So they might not get the color they want for like five or six months. Like I'm not going to just go purchase yarn. It's whatever I get donated or whatever I get at the secondhand stores. So um, I feel really lucky that with my business, there's no timeline. Like I have a backup order of like 18 orders of a specific item right now but like people want specific colors. So it's like, well, it'll come around eventually. So I get to work on it really leisurely. And I think that's probably pretty unique and I'm grateful for that. Definitely. Yeah, that's really awesome. So yeah, for those of you who want to turn your art into a career, absolutely go for it. If you feel amazing <laughs> about it, if you feel amazing about it and it's your dream come true, go for it. Absolutely. And there are some comments um, in the chat. People are really loving your story. They're saying you're really inspiring. And um, Anastasia also said, um, I love how you combined your love for children into your business. The toy sounds amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And then um, Marie is asking if you can share your site info. Part of my chronic condition is that I can't really, um, I have brain fog quite often. So um, uh, handling technology is not a strong suit for me. So really I predominantly sell things on Instagram. So if 
you don't see something that I'm selling that you want, you can ask me and I can give it a try because worst case scenario, I can't make it, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you asking for her info, while I show those uh, pictures of some of Vanessa's other creations, um, Agnesa will drop that information for you in the comments. Don't worry about it. We have it for you. But yeah, that's great too. I love hearing that you make the majority of your sales on Instagram. I mean, who would have thought that you that that's where you could sell crochet and knitted you know items that you make from home and have such a successful at home business through it. So I'm going to pull up those images for you right now. And by the way, we had somebody say that the toys sound really cool. And we're going to start with an image of a toy that she made. <laughs> yeah, that robot was a, a new recent thing where a neighbor, I'm a member on the Facebook free group in my neighborhood. And all of my neighbors now know that I'm the yarn junkie. So they all send me the yarn. And I had a friend donate a bunch of yarn to me. And he asked, he said, do you know how to make robots? And I said, I don't know. Let's find out. So this is the product of his query of that if I make robots. So that was an experiment and turned out to this little guy. <laughs> yeah, it is adorable. I hear Natalie from the other side <laughs> going, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Found that cute things are very uh, gratifying to make because you just get excited. It's fun to see cute things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've never seen a crochet robot before. That's brand new. It's so funny for me because I can see where the patterns develop in my brain because I can come up with something else from a previous thing. So if you look at the body of the robot, that came about when I actually learned how to crochet nests when the fires in Australia happened. I was making the bird nests. I learned how to do that. And then since then, I've taken that discovery of how to make the bowls into the body of the robot and then closing it on top. So like, and same with his head. It's just like other creations will then spark some sort of path to make the next thing, which is really strange that that's the way my brain works, but I'll wake up at three in the morning being like, oh, that's how I can make a unicorn or whatever. It's so strange. So your brain just kind of figures it out for you. And then one day you're like, oh, thanks brain. Now yeah. I think I know how to do this. I'm grateful for that strangeness. Awesome. That's amazing. I love that. That's so unique, like a unique way of working. I love it. Well, I feel like that adds a little bit of like extra creativity to it because you basically came up with this yourself. You invented this particular creation instead of looking up a pattern. Somebody else has done this a bunch of times. Well, and then the, the beauty and also hilariousness of it is because I don't make patterns because I don't write anything down or doesn't work like that. Literally everything is one of a kind because I don't really remember what I did last time that like the numbers won't be the same. So sizing is always different, which is fun because then everything is totally unique. One of a kind creations. Yeah. Like the shirt that I am wearing, I just saw her post pictures of, hey, I have some things that are left over, purchase them if you'd like. And instead of, you know, me ordering something that's mass produced and there's a whole bunch of them and everybody's wearing them, instead, this is the only one that looks exactly like this that I've seen out there, you know, that Vanessa has made herself. She has some other, sure, colorful halters, but this is the only one that looks exactly like this. So for me, that's extra special instead of going mm -hmm. and buying something at the store that everybody else is wearing, everybody else has exactly the same one. And it's slow fashion, which again, like I'm a huge advocate for not buying new clothes, instead buying something that was already out there and just transformed into something new. Yeah, definitely. So I have a quick question about this toy before I move on to the next picture. Do people usually buy the toys for their kids, for their dogs, or just for themselves? Combination. So uh, I've had a lot of teachers that buy them for their classrooms. A lot of families are homeschooling right now due to pandemic. So I've been getting a lot of orders of specific uh, supportive learning toys and uh, sometimes for families. Like I have an order right now and they're right next to me because I just finished today. I have an order of mermaids for a three-year-old and her 45-year-old mom. So it's like two different age ranges, but the same family. So it kind of is a, it's different for each person really. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. In the comments, Lita says, oh, I love that. Everything is truly one of a kind. And Mace mentioned that Vanessa works with me every step of the color shape of all my custom pieces. It's fun. It's a collaborative piece. So people will come to me with an idea and then I go, well, let's see. And then I show what yarn I have. And it's just like a fun collaborative process to make yeah. a custom piece for someone. For now, I'll move on to the second picture that we have. This is a bag you made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was trying to do a lot of drawstring bags. I got, again, this is the bowl. Like I figured out bowls. And then the top, which you'll see later, is actually taken from, I figured out how to do loofahs. And so I combined two different things into one. 
to create different bags. And so these like drawstring bags have become some of my favorite types to make. And I've made them in all different colors and patterns. I think I have another one in here too. That's a fruit. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, oh, there's the fruit. Oh yeah, the strawberry. How oh, cute, I love this one. This one's adorable. Yeah, that one was really fun to make too. I've made a couple of those. So people usually use this as just handbags? Um, the people who bought this are uh, actually an old student of mine and she uses it to tote her toys in. She's four. Oh. So her toy bag to, to carry all her toys on the oh go. Oh my goodness, how adorable. How cute. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another halter it's so funny I've actually only made about four halters I they were fun and I liked the way they turned out but I I don't know I guess I only just made a couple it didn't continue oh I've seen I've seen you make a couple for sure because I've seen yeah. this one and a different rainbow one and then I've seen uh, I think I've seen a yellow one too Oh, there's a bikini. I think I did a yellow bikini at one point. Oh, I think oh, I missed that. I got to see that too. Interesting. So here are more toys. Mermaids. Mermaids have become my favorite thing to make. I always joke that I'm a mermaid. Um, my preschool kids always used to call me a mermaid too. So mermaids are really dear to my heart. And that's the thing that I have the biggest order of. So I'm like backed up by 18 orders right now of mermaids. I always love hearing what names they get, but they're just so fun to make. And each one is so unique. That is awesome. Do people usually tell you, I want it to have this kind of hair color, this kind of skin color, green skin, green hair, that kind of thing? It totally depends. So for a while, I like in the beginning, I was just making mermaids based on whatever I had. And then um, as more and more people wanted them, I said, uh, I can put you on the wait list. And then as a mermaid arrives, like as I make one, I will offer people that mermaid. And if they don't want it, I'm like, that's fine. I'll offer it to the next person. So I do a lot like that. But I also do specific step-by-step -step custom. Like these two that I just finished today were step-by-step -step with the mom and daughter. They picked out every single color and every, everything about it. So open to both, but if people are specific about colors, there is a longer wait due to the fact that I'm working in secondhand materials. That's really cool. I love these. I'm, uh, I'm obsessed with mermaids. I can understand why there are 18 back orders for these because <laughs> even, even I want one. <laughs> You're fun. Uh, Lagos is saying they remind me of Adventure Time character style. Oh gosh, that's the best compliment ever. <laughs> and then you have a question. Darji's asking, is the yarn secondhand as well? And if so, where do you source it? Yes. So everything I do is secondhand, including packaging materials. I don't buy anything brand new. And I'm very, very grateful that 90% of the yarn that I utilize is donated to me. A lot of times people are cleaning out estate sales or family members have passed away who maybe used to work in yarn or maybe they're elderly and they don't, um, they have arthritis now so they can't utilize their yarn and they want it to go to somebody who will use it. So I'm mostly getting donated yarn. And then if I do need to buy or be specific, I live in Austin, Texas and there's this really great art store called Austin Creative Reuse or Austin ACR, Austin Creative Reuse. And they um, are a secondhand store of craft supplies. So it's only secondhand stuff that people have donated just much, much like a thrift store, but only craft supplies. So I can get my yarn there if I need to. But honestly, I've been very lucky. So many people are cleaning out their house right now during the pandemic that I have gotten, I think six large boxes since March of just, wow. So much yarn so i'm very lucky <laughs> yeah that is awesome i did notice that when i received this shirt that even the packaging was something that you reuse and i mean i i do that i never buy those envelopes i just reuse them so i was like cool i like that not just the items but the you know packaging too awesome adarji added wow that is so great i love that you try to reduce waste i think that's a very important mindset and practice i totally agree yeah thank you Right? I think it is important too. And I feel, and I think it's cool that people are excited about it through art because if art can inspire people to live in a less waste way, that's pretty magical. And you mentioned a loofah earlier and here it is. Yes. I have a lot of uh, zero waste um, home and self-care stuff as well. So um, reusable, like the loofah is reusable. You can just wash it and that lasts a lot of time versus utilizing the plastic ones or whatever those are made out of um as well as I think I have a couple other zero waste items as well like zero waste home care things mm -hmm. awesome I did notice a few others I want to skip ahead to one 
picture here that I want to have people take a look at and I want people to guess what these are. We're probably going to get it right away, but we'll see. Something that she made that I'm wondering if anybody in the audience can figure out. <laughs> uh, balloons, Lagnus is asking. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys got it. They are water balloons. I recognize them when I took a look at this picture because I'm in a lot of different art groups on Facebook and there are some things that people um, will sometimes post and be like, I saw somebody made this, what is this? This doesn't make any sense to me. And like a lot of uh, groups where you can ask questions. And somebody once recently, like a week ago, posted a picture of water balloons. And they said, I don't know what the heck is wrong with people. They're knitting water balloons now. Why would they do that? And that person's the whole comment section was like, you don't understand. And he's educated this person that all the you know rubber left behind, if you throw them around, you know, that stuff doesn't just disintegrate. That just, that's garbage out there in the world. That's going to be out there pretty much forever and animals can eat it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And they really, really educated this lady. And she's like, oh, she's like, I have no idea. <laughs> Did you have anything to say about these, Vanessa? I just love them. And I think um, my favorite, I mean, obviously I have a close kinship with children, but I love making things for children that start conversations. And just like everything you said, that's a conversation starter of like, why are we using reusable water balloons versus regular ones? Yeah. Then you start the conversation about sustainability and protecting our nature and protecting our animals and um, living a cleaner, sustainable world. So yeah, I love these. these. These were a really fun thing to make this summer. I had a lot of orders of these as people were home and looking for ways to cool off and hang out with their kids. Yeah. And I heard that these hurt less when they hit you and they make contact, right? Honestly, I think the equivalent is like a sponge, but I've only had it thrown at the, like, the dead center of my back. So I haven't had any like head smacks, but all my kids that use them like end up loving them and playing with them. So if, if two-year-olds can handle it. <laughs> I think they're kind of probably a combination of water balloons and like those super soaker balls that people totally. throw. I remember having them. I really remember those. Yeah. Why not have, you know, both of them at once instead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, Darcy says, I think I saw these floating around the internet. Yeah. People make them. I've seen them. You know, honestly, one really cool thing about yours, again, you make colorful clothes and I'm, all, I'm a sucker for like bright, colorful things. When I saw pictures of other people's water balloons out there, I usually saw really weird colors like beige, gray. And I was like, that kids are attracted to bright, colorful things. So I love that you made yours, like all the colors of the rainbow. Thank you. I'm a big color fan. So if I have all the colors, I use all the colors. Yeah. But for the people who aren't, you know, huge into bright, colorful things, I like that you also do a lot of neutrals, like the sponge and then this sweater over here. Mm -hmm. It's really just like a hodgepodge of whatever yarn I have on hand. In the beginning, I really didn't have much, but as my work has grown and people have seen it, I've been getting more and more donations. So I am having a more variety of choices, which is perfect for whatever the customer wants. And then are these, are these kitchen sponges? So these are actually facial rounds. So they swap out for cotton rounds or like makeup removers and um, any of the face care or body care things only use 100% cotton yarn. So it's very rare that I get that. So when I have enough to make facial rounds or the loofahs, I get really excited. What did you guess, Natalie? Coasters. Oh, she thought they were coasters. I should have had you guys guess. <laughs> you can see that. Yeah. That's cool. If I knew about this earlier, I would have ordered one of my package of the shirt. <laughs> Anastasia is wondering um, if you could show your workspace, your yarn station. Um, I don't really have one. I live in a tiny one bedroom apartment with my partner and our two cats. And I, our closet is busting with the seams with yarn. It's literally everywhere. Um, but due to my chronic illness, I really don't know where my body's going to collapse. So sometimes I have a, um, I can show you this bag. I have a large knitted bag and whatever project I'm working on at the time, I'll have all the pieces in it. And then wherever my body crashes is where I will lay down and crochet. So it may be on the couch, it may be in the bedroom, it may be on the floor. Like, I really don't know. That makes sense. Makes sense. This is cool. I never knew you made these kind of like household functional things as well. Yeah, so Swiffer covers are, I love them because if someone buys them, it means they're not going to use Swiffer wipers yeah. anymore. So I love selling these. Right. They're not throwing things away every time that they wipe their floor. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And they're great. cute. How often do you have a cute Swiffer <laughs> cover them? <laughs> right? You throw them in the wash. It's great. Like we, I mean, we, I shouldn't say we only mop once a week, but we only mop once a week. So we just throw it in when we do laundry and it's clean and it's done. I love it. Awesome. And then these are adorable. 
<laughs> baby booties are a new thing I figured out and I'm having too much fun with. So these were like tomato booties. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I know we have a couple people in the audience here who have babies. So, and I, like my, my sister Anastasia, uh, she commented on the toys. Are these for babies who aren't walking yet? I mean, I can make any size we need, really. <laughs> I guess, yeah, even if it's a child who walks around, then, you know, they, they could use them as slippers. It makes sense. It doesn't need a sole. That's what I was thinking. Like, Oh, yeah, no, they don't have soles on them. I haven't figured that out yet. But I wear mine around the house. Yeah, yeah, they're adorable. Here's another cute toy. The jellyfish. <laughs> that was a random one that came about. And then because I posted that, someone said, hey, can you make a starfish to go with it? And I was like, let's see. So I did. And then... They got a little ocean set. Oh, that is so cool. And then here's another sweater. I like sweaters. Sweaters are fun because they are a long project. This took me three months. Oh, wow. But I like doing them. But the next one that you have on there, my rainbow one, is my ultimate favorite sweater ever because it's a ultimate secondhand sweater. I saved all my secondhand scraps over the course of a year and then made a sweater out of it. So it's like a secondhand sweater made out of secondhand, secondhand materials, if that makes sense. It was like a scrap sweater. <laughs> like somebody recycled them when you got them and then you recycled it as well. So it's like double recycle. <laughs> well, I saved all my clippings in like a scrap bag and then eventually was able to spool them together to make a rainbow sweater. That is so cool. No, this is actually my favorite thing you've ever made too. Thank you. Love it. But again, I love bright, colorful things, so it makes sense. <laughs> I also love how the yarn is like different types. Like there's fuzzy yarn in some places and there's like the regular kind. Yeah. Earrings? Yes, earrings and all kinds of things. It just make whatever comes to mind and whatever is fun and whatever people seem to like. Mm -hmm. Bowls, so yeah, this is um, like a silverware kit. When we were all going out and eating at restaurants, this was my like to-go silverware on the go bag oh that's awesome that makes sense <laughs> cat beds my mm -hmm. cats love theirs i love making those there's basically those nests that i made for the australian birds after the fire i just made them massive into cat nests <laughs> that's really cool and a blanket yeah this is a baby blanket so i've been making a lot of baby blankets uh and it's been a lot of fun it's fun to make them all right this is Vanessa's amazing creative skill. And I'm really so glad that I, I snagged Vanessa last minute. I was like, hey, wanna be on the show? It's like in a day or two. <laughs> so I'm really glad you could be a part of it. It's so fun to be around and be together with other like artists just to be inspired by their work is really, this is fun and something that we all need right now. So thank you so much for organizing this. Oh, definitely. That's the reason. I mean, we can't really socialize right now, not the way that we used to. And, you know, I really miss that feeling of having an artsy community of people who are like-minded and why not create it virtually if you can't do it any other way? Beautiful. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your art and explaining how, you know, that I love that there's not just, oh, hey, I make things from yarn. There's a whole story behind it and exactly the, the fact that you recycle and you want to have less waste in the world and all of that, and that it allows you to have the stay at home job so that even with your, your illness, you're capable of working on this whenever you have the energy. And I love that. Thank you. And you have some uh, more comments. Darji uh, says the photography of your work is very beautiful as well. Do you do it yourself? My husband. My husband uh, okay. comes from a line of professional photographers. So he has lots of skills. <laughs> It shows. Yeah. Those are really good photos. I'll share that with him because he always takes, I say, can you go make this beautiful? And he takes things <laughs> on adventures and he shoots them for me. So I am grateful that it, it comes across that way because he works really hard on that. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing all that. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here and sharing all that with us. We're going to move on to the next person in the show. That is going to be Darji. Darji B. Hi. So, Darji, you're, you're in Germany, right? Yeah, I'm German and I just currently, like I just recently moved back here um, after not having lived here for many years. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's also the reason why I, my um, 
it's it's a little bit late so if i yawn it's not because i'm bored it's just kind of late here <laughs> what time is it in germany right now it is 4 a.m <laughs> I'm so sorry for doing this to you, but I'm so, so honored that you are here right now. No, it's okay. I stay up to ungodly hours. <laughs> so, it's fine. Aww. Well, Darji has some really cool art to share with you. Um, I did want to preface it really quick with, uh, unfortunately, I don't know Darji in person, maybe one day. But I saw her share something on in one of those art groups that I follow on Facebook just to get inspired and see what people are up to. Again, I'm trying to get myself and, you know, filled with the creativity of, of, of what people are creating around right, right now when life isn't very inspirational and they're still managing. So I decided to fill my life with that right now and follow all these groups and look at all these different things people are making. And Darji shared something in one of the groups that just smacked me in the face with how powerful it was. And I saw that their responses were everybody else felt the same way. And I was just like, wow, I got to reach out to this girl. I got to talk to her. I got to ask her to be on this show. And luckily for me, she agreed. I was happy to have you here. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here as well. Awesome. Yeah. So Darji uh, created a PowerPoint presentation that she's going to share with us, right? While Darji... Um, figures that out before I see it pop up. As I mentioned earlier, she is a digital and watercolor artist with a focus on human characters and portraits. I've also seen some non-human characters. I've seen a self-portrait of you um, elf ears and maybe a few other things that didn't look, you know, your typical human being. Um, I think what I saw first was a digital creation, right? Um, yes, it, it was a comic I uh, drew digitally mm -hmm. and honestly I was uh, blown away by the response but um, I'll talk more about that later. We'll show you that one. So yeah. can ev everyone see the screen? <laughs> yeah, you're as... welcome. <laughs> All right, so it's um, a very shitty last minute PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to be starting off by showing you a couple of watercolor pieces that I made, then a little bit of my digital art. And I'm gonna share the comic that got me here in the end. Um, so I don't have a scanner right now, so I had to take all of my photos with my phone. I mostly use a lot of red and blue in my watercolor pieces and I usually just get inspired by my own emotions mostly when I'm feeling bad actually and then I just whip something up and another major inspiration is song lyrics so I will listen to a song and then just try to paint the lyrics somehow. All right, so this one is a self-portrait uh, that I just recently drew. Um, there is not much of a story behind it. I just felt like drawing self-portrait because I didn't, I don't really do that too much. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yes? About the previous one. Um, I think you said earlier you usually create art when you're feeling down, right? Yes. I wanted to ask about that. What is it about being in that mood that makes you want to create? The thing is, I'm quite awful at, at expressing myself verbally, I'd say. That's why I don't really talk to people a lot about what I'm feeling. So painting something is my way to like, um, express my emotions so that they don't just um, get bottled up inside too much. Yeah. Honestly, I think there are a lot of artists who can relate to that part. I have to feel pretty depressed in order to write really well, which you'll see mm -hmm. later on when I share one of my pieces. So I relate to that on a, you know, on a level that <laughs> I was like, I get you. But when I mm -hmm. saw this, I was like, oh, 
I can feel what you're feeling when you painted this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad that people can feel emotions through my art. <laughs> Okay, so this one, I actually made it today. Um, the inspiration behind it is a, a song that I really like by Wasteblood. And the first line goes, it, um, it resonated. So I tried to put that into like a picture and I just finished that a couple hours before this call actually. That is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. So wait, how long did this take you? Um, the sketching is usually pretty quick, 20 to 30 minutes. And then the coloring takes around an hour. I'd say that when it comes to watercolor painting, I'm quite quick with my pieces. They usually don't take longer than two hours, but my digital art, even though sometimes it looks a little bit simpler than my watercolor art, it actually takes a lot longer because I only started that medium recently, so. And Darji will share some um, of her digital art as well at near the end, I think. But that is amazing that you can basically pump this out in a couple of hours. I know many artists who, I mean, I only maybe base it off myself. I'm not, I'm an aspiring artist. I, I'm not good. But when I try, it'll take me weeks to get something to the point where I can show it. So this is awesome. You're like, I just made this today. Honestly, lately I've been feeling very inspired um, because I've been feeling very bad, <laughs> actually, because um, I'm just, I've just moved to another country and it's just always a little bit confusing and when you have to get settled. And before that, I was not painting a lot for many months, actually. So even though it comes from a, not a very positive place, the inspiration, I'm just glad that I'm putting something down. I'll just move on to the next one. These are old pieces that I probably did about two years ago. The one on the left, I just saw a picture of a girl on Instagram and I kind of stylized it and put it into my own style. And the one on the right is actually, uh, the reference was a, a doll, uh, a ball jointed doll. And I just added the hands in the background because I really like drawing uh, big hands with long nails, as you will probably notice. <laughs> the one on top, I also did that recently. Mm, I guess it's open to interpretation. I don't really have a lot to say about it. I just felt like drawing it and it just kind of appeared on my paper. And the one on the bottom is one of my pieces that I made when I was feeling good actually and I just felt like drawing something nice and I feel like you can really see the difference in colors because usually I use a lot of red and blue when I'm feeling down but when I'm feeling happier it's also other colors and that's it for my um, watercolor pieces <laughs> And I will be showing my digital art now. So, yeah. Mind if I share some of the comments? We, uh, yeah. we see you're having a lot of appreciation in the chat um, before you go to your digital art. I wanted to go over some of these. Um, Vanessa loved your portrait. Mace was asking the crown one, is it for sale? I wanted to put it up in my room, but I guess I could discuss uh, the price privately because I haven't really sold any of my finished pieces. I usually just take on commissions. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure how to price it actually. <laughs> Lagu is just responding to when you were talking about the emotional aspect and in, in your work and how it's a lot easier for you to um, create art when you're feeling down. Vanessa says it's also beautiful and moving. Oh my God, I love the hair on the bottom. I'm not sure which one that was referring to. I apologize. I think the purple and orange hair. That one okay. Up. And Agnesa dropped Darji's Instagram and email and PayPal info for anybody who does want to reach out to her about any of her art. 
Um, I'm all for artists promoting their work on this because I want artists to have a place to do that in a virtual world without having like art fairs and galleries full of people right now. There's, there got to be a place somewhere for people to go ahead and show their creative projects and uh, make a living from them. Thank you guys so much for the kind comments. I really appreciate it. It's, um, it's a little bit hard for me to talk about my watercolor pieces. And I just uh, recently started sharing them because I usually just share my digital art. Because as you will see, it's a little bit more fun and more upbeat than my watercolor pieces. And that's also how I primarily make money with art. People like to have digital portraits or their characters painted from tabletop games. And yeah, um, the pieces that I'm going to be sharing were actually from a little online challenge where you should draw pinups for 30 days straight. I Unfortunately, I only did five, but those are the ones that I'll be sharing because I feel like they're a good representation of my digital art. And this is the first one. It's um, the topic for that day was bunny. So I did a little pinup with like a bunny theme and yeah, the colors are a lot more brighter and fun and digital art is what I go to when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling nice and just want to create and just relax, listen to a podcast and just draw without being in my fields. <laughs> and the next one, the prompt for this one was nurse. Um, I really like the hairstyle I did on that one actually. Um, yeah, I try to be a little bit inclusive with like uh, body types and races with this challenge. And the third one, the theme is army. And I thought I'd just draw like a muscular pinup because I like muscular ladies. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one, the prompt for this one is secretary. It's actually my favorite out of the ones that I did for this challenge. And the last one, the prompt for this one was which. And that is the piece for it. <laughs> so. Okay, I've never seen, I like how the muscular one and this one, it's like a masculine pinup. I've never seen that done before. How cool is that? <laughs> well, I do, I, I'm really into uh, drag and drag artists and a lot of them, their style devils a little bit in pinup. So I kind of got inspired by a drag artist for that piece. And I really think there should be more male pinups. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Vanessa says, I love the witch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to ask really quick, is this, is this person based on somebody you know in real life? Um, not really. I had... I had a reference for the post somewhat, mm -hmm. but the rest was more just in my own inspiration. Okay. I just saw the tattoo and that particular placement and I was like, maybe that's a person you know and you decided to incorporate that little detail to show them that was you. <laughs> no, I just thought that the moon tattoo would be fitting because the prompt was switched, yeah. so yeah. And earlier for, for your nurse, I thought that the nurse looked like kind of out like Alice in Wonderland or like maybe crossed with Cinderella or something like that. I like that. Yeah, that was kind of the vibe I was going for with that one. It translated well. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, that's it from my digital art and I'll be moving on to the comic if there aren't any more questions. Nat says, I'm in love with your work. Go man pinups. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're pretty neat. <laughs> okay, so for the, uh, for the comic, there is a little bit of a content warning. It contains nudity and um, sexual trauma. 
and I'm, I'll just be going through it silently and then leave a moment for everyone to just reflect on it. So it's six panels. Okay, and can we see that one one more time from the beginning? Yeah. yeah. And that is it. When Darji shared this in the uh, Facebook group. It was a Facebook group for risque art. And usually you do see, you know, plenty of nudity and people exploring the, the anatomy and the little intricate details of a person's body and their art and posting those in there. But I've never seen anything there with this kind of message where um, it kind of, a lot of people who saw this, I think probably 99% of the comments that Darji got on this were just people going, basically, holy shit, that was uh, very, you know, that was a very powerful message that they didn't even expect. Could you skip to the next one one more time? We have somebody asking to see yeah. that. And people were just relating um, to this particular image. And I know personally, as a woman, I connected with it. It resonated with me. And I saw hundreds of comments i don't know if we got to the thousands but hundreds of comments of people going wow i did not expect that but wow wow and just they saw themselves in this image they saw themselves relate to it because a lot of people have been through that kind of moment and then i love how it ends on a positive note that she has a supportive partner who's going to hold her and comfort her in this moment i love that this is so powerful Thank you. I was honestly blown away by the response that it got. I was expecting it to get 30 likes and then just be buried in the Facebook group. But um, I was really happy and also a little bit sad that so many people could relate to this. But got this opportunity through this comic. So I'm really grateful that I did decide to post it because it was a hard thing for me to illustrate and post so yeah mm -hmm. definitely i wanted to ask you how it is that you might like i love in the next panel and um if, if you could flip to that second one one more time the face with the words dread just like i feel like i okay i know the feeling of dread i know what it feels like but i have never thought of how do you express dread visually in you know drawing form how did you come up with the 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 exact like you you painted it you drew it exactly in the way that i feel like dread feels like because in that moment it's actually based off a um, personal experience in that moment all i could think of was that dread is just oozing out of my body so um i tried to uh, illustrate the word oozing mm -hmm. and just wrote dread in it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I got the inspiration behind that panel. Yeah, I feel like the, from these last three panels, the, the first and then the last one from these three are the ones that just kind of hit you in the face with how powerful they are. But I did want to really, really commend the way that you managed to express this visually. Because again, the, the oozing of the face with the words dread in it, who would, have, who would have thought that this is how you depict that in order to have your audience take a look at it and think, 
whoa, she gets, she gets me. She understands what I went through. I relate, I connect. How did this person express it, express this message, you know, so clearly. And I really wanted to compliment you on being able to do it in this way. Thank you so much. And that's it for my art. I will stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darji. Um, Vanessa Marie said it's so powerful, the dread dripping. You can literally feel it. And I agree with that. Um, Mar Maria said, I agree. Very powerful. Thank you so much. Lagu says masterful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Again, Darji's information is in the um, comment section. Maria says, so kind of you to stay up so late to share. I do, I have tons more questions for you, but I do not want to keep torturing you. You're probably falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. So. I'll have you come back sometime with new art and for a future show. Yeah? I'd love to, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much for being here again. I'm so honored, so grateful. You have a good night. <laughs> have a good night. Get some rest. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be staying until it's over. <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'm sorry for, again, the extra torture you're going to go through. If anybody has questions, um, go ahead and throw those into the comment section at any point. Since I still have you here, I was going to ask you really quick then, before we move on to the next part of the show, how did, so you said recently you started experimenting with the digital aspect of the, of your art, right? Mm -hmm. How yeah. did you get into that? Well, it's not so recent. Actually, I started digital art about three years ago. But the thing is, I already did um, traditional art since I was very small. So three years ago is recent for me. And um, I actually got into it because a, a classmate got a drawing tablet and I tried it out. And then I got myself one and I liked it and I still do it occasionally. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Maria says, please keep working and sharing. <laughs> I will. All right. Well, thanks for being here. You are wonderful and I'm so happy to have had you on this show. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, up next is yours truly. I have something um, I wanted to share as well this round. And I did also want to preface it with a trigger warning. There are elements of um, domestic violence or uh, abuse and um, suicidal ideations um, or suicide. And if you are not comfortable during something like that, uh, it, I believe it'll last about seven to eight minutes and you're welcome to uh, skip out on that part. We will have a musician come after me, so don't bail for good and not come back because he needs an awesome supportive audience for his song. Steven comes up next, he's gonna close up the show. But I will end up sharing something that I created and it was, again, also a dark triggering written work that I just wrote about a week ago and I decided not to edit it and just share it with all of you because I had already started these virtual creative workshops and now I kind of feel like well, if I make something during this, I ought to share it. I can't be a hypocrite and ask people to come on the show and share their art, but I'm not going to. And again, this is, I guess you could call a rough draft because I worked on it once and then edited one word in it and that's it, but I'm not gonna change a thing because for me, it's powerful. And in fact, it's so powerful, I can't read it to you because probably my voice will shake from the emotions I feel during it. So I pre-recorded myself reading it. I read it out loud and recorded it four or five times until I could get one without my voice shaking. It is something that I personally, I never, I, it is, um, I will explain a little bit more for, for you at the end. It is not something I have 100% went through. There are parts of it that are, it's me exploring a scenario if it had happened. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to share it with you. And again, warning, if you're not comfortable, no judgment. Um, again, I recorded myself reading it and I made a little video with graphics so that people can um, view it, kind of have something to look at. There are lyrics on this, and lyrics, there are the, the words of the spoken poem, and I think it's a poem. <laughs> I don't know what exactly it is, but the words will show up on the screen so you can follow along in case Zoom cuts out at any point. Um, I do, though, recommend 
maybe closing your eyes and not looking at the graphics as much if you hear me if you hear it okay because it um i think it's more powerful that way but if you miss it a word go ahead and glance at the screen for those lyrics i just think that the images can be distracting they're just there so that this is pretty <laughs> okay sharing my little video that i made with you I was ecstatic. Freedom, my heart screamed. As I pictured myself donning a cape and leaping off a cliff, only to be caught by the breeze and plopped onto a cloud. All that awaited me was softness and warmth, a ray of sunlight on my face, my hands no longer trembling as they held on to the glittering sharp sting of escape. I would feel at home, finally and forever. Never again would I be lost and searching for strength, for meaning, for happiness. I would be my own. I'd own myself for once. No demands, no expectations, no voice calling from the other room. Elena! Open the door, now! I am busy in an embrace of arms that never held me before, but now they are here to make up for their absence. Never would I be without touch, without contact, alone in a cold sea, floating away into the chilly evening as a tropical island full of piña coladas and laughing faces hosts dances without me, without noticing I'm gone. That is how it has felt all these years. A promise made in a church now brings me to tears. I remember feeling angels brushing against my skin as I wore white and felt I was bursting at the seams with joy. My cheeks hurt from smiling as I shook hands and held flowers. He promised me flowers, love, his body beside mine, his hands reaching for me, babies born from me. Stop it now, he screams. You're being such a child. But that door protects me from the monster that became of a man who was once good, whom now I fear. I summon those same angels near again, and they whisper comfort in my ear so sweetly that I sink deeper into the warm embrace of heaven. White tufts of clouds and dandelion seeds and the softest silk. My body is going home soon and so will my soul. I open my eyes to see a child giggling that might have once been mine.
A thin, translucent mirage hovering above me, becoming clearer and dearer every minute. I stretch my arms toward my baby and say, See you soon, my love. A silver wolf dog carries a chain of daisies and tenderly places it on the infant's head. And the child waves at me, takes the tail of my childhood pet, and follows him away somewhere out of sight. I'm not sorry, he screams at my door. It's okay, I think. You're forgiven anyway. Just please never visit where I'm going. I am no longer going to be yours, and this child never was. You can have the house and all the things in it. Replace me but only if you're kind to her. Never think of me. You don't deserve my memory. Goodbye, I whisper this last word and submerge myself beneath the scarlet water, whether by choice or due to weakness. I slide down to the ceramic bottom of the slippery tub and all that remains above the surface is two hands limply perched on the edges the wrists carved with lines that if you look at them from the right angle through rose-colored glasses, look like a goodbye letter to an abusive lover banging on the bathroom door. All right, that was something I wanted to share with all of you, and I'm sorry we got the mood here all dark and gloomy for a second. I promise you that the writing prompt thread after this is going to just get you out of that funk in just a second here. I did want to talk a little bit about it. Um, I'm sure that now you see why I chose not to read it live. (laughs) So for me, half of this poem was something I actually went through and the latter half is a hypothetical scenario that I did not end up um, actually experiencing, but it is something that at that time in my life when I was going through this really dark thing, I was uh, married that I'm no long, I no longer am, I'm no longer in that situation, but it is a thought I entertained, which is why I gave you the warning about suicide, suicidal ideations. Um, so when I wrote this, I hadn't thought, uh, I've been divorced for over five years. I have not, I don't regularly just sit there and think about it. I have not had a thought about what I went through in a really long time. How I actually came about this is I was planning this workshop a week ago and I wanted to find some music that I can play during the the writing prompt. So I was playing some songs and thinking, oh, let's see what kind of mood this puts me in. What kind of prompt I could come up with for everybody to write during this music. And 
I played a couple of different songs and I discovered the whole copyright issue and I can't play on this show anything that isn't free and has no copyright. So I was looking through the YouTube studio music that came free with YouTube and then discovered another website. So I was just going down this rabbit hole of playing different songs and thinking, does this make me feel anything? What can I have people write while this song is playing? So I came across a really happy song and thought, ooh, let's do this. I'm gonna have people write about something dark with like a comedic twist to it and listen to this happy upbeat music and then have it um and then see how what the right what the writing turns out to be like well it switched from the really happy song i wrote the first two lines about freedom and feeling you know like my heart screaming freedom i wrote those two during the happy song and then was stuck for a second because like nothing could come to me and then a really that this guitar piece this free uh royalty free guitar piece went on next and all of a sudden took my writing to a whole different place. I was just, again, trying out some music, no plan to actually sit there and write, but I couldn't stop. And I played that song three or four times in a row, which I actually had to edit that in there so that when it ends, I could just have it replay all over again. And I just wrote nonstop. And this was at two or three in the morning. And I just, this just came out of me out of nowhere. And like, like Darji mentioned, Usually when I write, I have to be going through something mentally that actually makes me feel emotions before I can actually explain them in words. And I was kind of going, you know, a lot of us because of coronavirus and being, you know, being isolated, I was kind of going through this funk where I was just sitting at home in the dark, spending, you know, the whole night just on my computer and not being really productive and feeling like I... I, I don't know, I needed to do to, to get out of that. And so I thought, why not plan this workshop? Maybe that'll be exciting, maybe that'll be fun. And so this came out and I'm gonna share the screen really quick with you, just because I thought this was hilarious. Um, for anybody who does not approve of language, I know my mother is here. I am sorry in advance, I will say something <laughs> um, that you might be uncomfortable with. When I typed this poem, I just typed it in a Google Docs document and just typed it up really quick. And then after I finished that, it just felt like I word vomited this thing that I was just like, ah, what just happened? Why did that just come out of my brain? At the very end, after I wrote down the date, I wrote, whoa, what the fuck? Where did that come from? <laughs> I shocked my own self with this. My poetry is usually more like, I don't know, a life lesson that I learned. Let's share it with others, little bits of wisdom. Or if you were here for the first show, I shared a poem about aging and how there's kind of a generational gap and people you know, sometimes don't understand how this older person with a young soul feels like. Usually it's positive explorations, you know, things that you go through in life. And I, yeah, that's usually my poetry. And I don't often write, I don't really write dark poetry like this. And this was a surprise for me. And it's not my usual way of writing. Like I, as you notice, it doesn't really rhyme. It doesn't, it's something that only goes with that particular guitar piece and with that particular recording. Like there's, I don't even think it would work if it was in print. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you because I knew that we're going to have plenty of other artists who are bearing their souls and being very vulnerable when they share their art. And again, I didn't want to be a hypocrite and not do that myself ever. So as soon as I wrote that, I thought, I think this is going in the workshop. Um, and that was it for you. I got a comment saying, I love that music brought that out of you. I'm, and then sometimes how the, in, in the process is how magic happens. Exactly. That was kind of like a weird magical scenario where poof, and this thing came out of my brain or my heart without me even realizing it was there. I have never ever written poetry about anything I went through in my marriage. It's just not a thing I ever thought I would explore in writing. I thought maybe one day down the road when I'm 80 years old, I might write a memoir or something like that, but never thought I would find a way to put it into, you know, those kind of words and poetry style. So I also got a comment saying, I'm thankful you didn't edit a thing. The, the visuals were clear and palpable. I finished putting this video together right before this workshop. So <laughs> thanks for compliments on a very last minute um, recording. I worked on it yesterday till about six in the morning and then I finished it up today. I just thought that it would make more sense to see it with maybe visuals and the text so you can read it aloud and then um, not just a recording. So, and then somebody else commented saying, you let poetry write you. And that's basically exactly what happened. I love how uh, Katrina put that because yeah, it just wrote me into existence. It wrote me in that moment 
five and a half years ago when I was going through this really dark experience that I thought was long ago healed over, you know, crusted over, scarred over somewhere in the recesses of my mind. And all of a sudden, poetry is like, nah, -uh. we're going to make you write about this right now. I don't care that it's 3 a.m. and you're not ready for this. It's, gonna, it's happening. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Little side note, I am very, very late to the party and I just got an Instagram account, but I plan to post little snippets of my poetry there in the future if you'd like to go and see more. So I have a writing prompt next, which is I usually like to share something written first before I have everybody join in in a writing prompt. It's going to be a shorter one because we have people from the East Coast and Germany. Um, and I always run out of my time. I want to end these at 7.30, not eight. But um, we usually are writing prompts. How they work is about seven minutes of music plays. And then you have a prompt and you write during that. And as I promised you, I'm gonna get you all out of that dark funk that um, maybe my writing put you in, maybe Darji's last image put you in. I'm gonna have you write about something uh, uplifting. And it's gonna be five minutes of music instead so that we can save a little time. And because I feel like it's something, if you really, really dig deep and you start focusing on this and you can write a novel. So I want you to do a really quick version of that. And let me share the screen here with you so I can share what the prompt is. Again, it's going to be five minutes, about five minutes of writing. Afterwards, I'm going to ask anybody if they would like to either read their writing aloud or have me read it aloud for them. You can also just drop it in the comments section and have us read it ourselves silently um, up to you. You don't have to share only if you'd like to. And the writing prompt is it directly relates to my poem, but in a positive perspective. So as I mentioned earlier, this was about my marriage and I mean, the whole, the church scene and all of that. So for me, this was something obviously I really wanted to happen in my life because, you know, I was excited about getting married and having this beautiful uh, empire I'm going to build with this person who I thought was going to be a loving, supportive partner. So it was a dream come true for me. And then very quickly, a couple of months in, it went downhill and I realized I actually don't want to be in this anymore. And of course, when I no longer ended up being in that situation, I thought, I am so glad that I'm no longer there. Why did I think that I wanted that? So the writing prompt is, write about a time when something you thought you really wanted didn't happen and you ended up better off without it. I'm gonna play a song for all of you. Feel free to write it by hand, write it in the comments section, entirely up to you. And there we go.
Okay. That was about five minutes for everybody. I am getting a few things coming into the comments. Feel free to share anything if you want me to read it aloud or if you don't want me to read it aloud, but you want people to read it themselves in the comments section. I do have one submission that is anonymous from somebody who's attending and I am going to read that one aloud and share it with you. By the way, feel free to send me something anonymously. When you do that in the chat section where it says everybody, everyone with a little arrow, the little blue uh, button, go ahead and press that and you could select to send it just to me, which is I'm Alina Oloferovsky. Click on that name. You'll see it says privately in red in parentheses and go ahead and do that if you'd like to have it anonymous. So this is the submission I have right now from somebody. I thought that the best way to live life was planning every second of it. But every time that something didn't go as planned, frustration and anger came to me, making my beloveds and me unhappy. Today, I like to live day by day without caring and life is better. Aw, how pretty. Does anybody else have anything that they maybe wrote down by hand and would like to read themselves? Uh, yeah, I wrote something down by hand. Yeah. Very okay. short. I'll just read it for you. Without you is my relief greater than my grief. I will care for you from afar, even though I love the person you are. That's it. Wow, it even rhymed. It's a proper poem. <laughs> Yeah, the first uh, version didn't rhyme, but then I just rewrote it so that it didn't. You had time for a revision stage too. I love yeah. that. Thank you for sharing that. We have another person who's raising a hand. I see Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hi. Would you like to read yours aloud yourself? Yes, because only because I couldn't possibly type it in quick enough for you to read it for me. <laughs> But I would way rather you read it for me, but here I go. Um, awakening to zero. Is that still a number? I wonder. I grew up and carried zero wherever I went. Whispers grew louder and louder until I felt explosions inside. Zero became me, you, and every number I'd ever seen. And I thought zero was the end. Zero, let me begin. That's it. Wow. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for listening. We have one more from Lagus. Lagus, would you like to read it aloud yourself or have me read it? Oh, he says, go ahead. Okay. I'll read his. Lagus is a, our artist who was on the previous two workshops and he'll be back in the future with more art and more writing. I'm um, happy to have you here and honored to read your poem for you. Oh, how I wanted to be king, to rule the world to the smallest thing. Instead, I grew up the greatest fool, which is much harder, but way more cool. <laughs> I love that. Great. Thank you for sharing that. By the way, Lagos, I also love that yours rhymes. Not that I have anything against poems that don't rhyme. My poems usually don't rhyme, but that's because it's easier <laughs> and I'm lazy. All right, we might have time for one more short one if we have somebody else who didn't have a chance. Somebody said they wrote three massive paragraphs. Um, well, all right, so she's opting out of sharing hers. That's all right. We have had some really interesting material that was written during that prompt. Thank you so much, everybody who participated in the writing prompt and for sharing your poetry with us. I am now going to move on to a very last person in this show, and it is Stephen. Stephen, our guitar player, who we've all been eagerly awaiting. Stephen actually uh, played a song during the last uh, workshop that we had. And um, this time, because last time it was not the best quality of sound, we noticed that sometimes Zoom captures sound okay, sometimes it doesn't. Don't know why and which, maybe different devices. But to not have any of those sound issues, we had Stephen actually pre-record himself playing a song on the guitar. And I'm going to share that video with you right now. And if anybody has any questions about Steven's song that pops into your head, go ahead and share that in the comments section and we'll have him answer maybe two or three questions at the end before the show is over. Okay, let me pull that up for you all. 
in a second here. And he recorded it on um, the phone and had some compression issues, he said. So it might be a little off with the playing and the music, but it should sound better than um, some of the issues we've had last time. Okay.
All right. That was Stephen, everybody. Um, I already am seeing questions of people saying, kind of sounds like Blackmore's Night, which I love them. That's, that's a good one. Somebody else is saying, is this an original piece? And I'm going to let Stephen just jump right in and answer that question for you all. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Probably not. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it's already going better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's an original piece. Oddly, I was watching Aladdin with my kids at the same time that I was just doing some random practices. And for some reason, I started playing with some of the scales uh, the, in, uh, from, you know, the old cartoon Aladdin. So that's kind of just what popped out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that he's Blackmore's Night. Blackmore's Night is one of my favorite, like one of my first influences from when I ever started playing. So I love that he does that. <laughs> I know, me too. I love that other people know about them because most people have no idea when I bring them up. So all three of us are just like fangirling and boying over here. <laughs> oh, like when he said when he said that, I was like, really? Someone's heard of them? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm going to leave a link in the comments section. And just so everybody knows, sometimes we have artists who, you know, drop their Venmo and PayPal information if anybody wants to tip them or contact them for commissions and et cetera. Steven instead told me that he wanted me to share this link. He said that any money that he makes from his music is directly donated to the Easter Seals Handy Camp. And that's handy camp like camping, which is a camp specifically for both the mentally and physically disabled. He added that both of his children, which you could see a kid playing with bracelets in the video. I love that. He added that both of his children have autism, so he dedicates a lot of effort into that. And you can look him up. I'm going to also leave his name in the chat section. You can look him up. He does have material on Spotify and Amazon and YouTube. And I had a question for you, Stephen, and maybe we might get a couple more from other people. My question for you is... Well, before I begin, what was the song called again? This one? This one and Night in Probably also because of the fact that I was watching Latin when I was Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and last time your song that you played, Moonfall, which for anybody who wants to find the other videos from previous workshops, I will drop those links in the comment section in a sec here. But both of those songs, they're, you know, this beautiful guitar playing that I'm not a musician. And as a non-musician, my question was, how does somebody come up with that? So my question is, how do you write your music and how do you come up with the title, the melody, and turn it into an actual song? Um, I do a lot of practices. Uh, a lot of my stuff, I want to say 90% of my music comes from when I'm sitting outside watching my kids play while I play guitar. Anytime I bring them outside, we have an apartment complex, I have to go outside and watch them, but it kind of, kind of that turned into my practice time. And I would just start building riffs and I would hear riffs come together and every time the riffs would start coming together, stories would start building in my head. And if not stories, I would see pictures that would pop up in my mind. Or just like when I hear stuff, I like to play to it. Like when you were reading your poem, I was kind of playing tones to it and it was actually really fun because like I was playing with random notes that were kind of like the feel of what your poem was. And so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, that you just you know, heard that and decided to start just jamming along with it. We have a comment saying, I love when kids are an inspiration for art. <laughs> and then gratitude for you sharing about the organization. And yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we got to see a little bit Thank of what you. your brain works like when you write music and i love that you just practice with your kids right there and then they're you know they're picking up on that that creativity happening right around them and they see their dad making music and they're just like they get free concerts all the time first of all <laughs> that's awesome but they also see it cre being created from the yeah. beginning stages when you're like here's a chord progression that uh, stuck in my head and then you turn it into an actual whole song yeah no i have plan I'm, I'm hoping that i'm able to pass it on to them i mean I've always wanted to pass on, you know, stuff to my kids, just like everyone does. I was a hairstylist for a long time, and I was always like, I hope I have a girl. I hope I have a girl. I have two boys. Guess what I'm not passing on? So now I do music, and I keep hoping that eventually I'm going to be able to pass that on to my, uh, at least my youngest son, 
and it's kind of funny because one of my guitars just broke, but it, which uh, is inconvenient most of the time because I'm a lefty, and it's hard to get lefty guitars, but apparently now my son is a lefty, so that's awesome because I'm just going to get the guitar repaired and pass that one on to him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool because you know exactly how to teach him because you probably struggled with that in the beginning, right? With having everything yeah. designed for right-handed people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My guitar teacher hated it actually because I started off using thumb picks and it was really hard to find left-handed thumb picks. And oh. he always used to be the one to get stuck buying them for me. Yeah, that's hilarious. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing that piece. And I am glad that you are here to share a second song with us. And I'll gladly have you back again with more of your creations. As always, honored to have you here. And thanks for sharing your lovely song with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and again, Stephen will be back in future shows. And for those of you who know, and for those of you who don't know, we have these shows every 15th and 30th of every month. There will be a few exceptions for holidays and such in the future, but that means that this is the 30th and the next one's on September 15th. We have a lot of really cool stuff already booked for that one because I had a lot of people want September 15th as a date for when they go. And I will share about who's coming up in that show a little bit more in advance as I get more organized. So if all of you want to look up Virtual Creative Workshop and Variety Show, there's a Facebook page for it. There will eventually be a website for it when I get my vagabond boyfriend to come back home and help me build a website and use his creative skills for that. And I also post events on Facebook that you can find if you're my Facebook friend where you can get all that information for future shows. Again, thank you so much for everybody who shared anything, whether it's an impromptu written piece of poetry, all of my featured guests, you guys are so amazing. Thank you for being a part of this. For those of you who were featured guests, absolutely come back as an audience member or another featured guest in the future. I do have people who share something for one show and then something different for a future show. Sometimes it's a completely different skill. Like for example, I'll have Steven back one day to do his, he does these really cool braiding things with hair and it just looks like amazing biking hair and I am having him work his way up with, you know, trying out sharing some music with an audience first before he does that because he thinks it's more nerve wracking. So for all of you who've been on this show as a featured guest and want to come back, definitely reach out to me. Virtual creative workshop at gmail.com is where you would pitch your idea for what you'd like to do for a future show. And I know there are some of you who don't know me in person. That is how you would reach out to me or you who came here as an audience member. And if you have something you'd like to share in a future workshop as well, get in touch with me if you'd like to be a featured guest, or if you know somebody who is, you know, perfect for one of the future virtual creative workshops, definitely send them my way. My name is Alina Olofarovsky. I'm going to be your host always unless maybe one day I'll have plenty of people helping me manage this thing. For now, I have lovely, beautiful, wonderful Agnesa helping me with co-hosting this third workshop. We will both be back for future workshops again, 15th and 30th of every month. Write that on your heart and please come back. Thank you again to everybody who came to this show. I had an amazing time watching the art and writing and all of that being created right here in front of all of us and shared from previous projects you've worked on and hopefully some of you are inspired for future projects as well. All right, good night to everybody wherever you all are and see you in a future show. Bye. Thank you so much everyone. Have a good night. Bye.